Second part of section 2.2 is all about graphing piecewise functions. And a piecewise function is actually very, very useful. Um, it gives us directions on different functions to use based on different intervals of the domain. So the first thing that I like to do when graphing a piecewise function is draw a line, an auxiliary line of demarcation where the action is going to happen. And all the action is going to happen at x equals 1. So I'm going to draw in an auxiliary line. And an auxiliary line is auxiliary because it's not actually part of the graph which is why I always draw it dashed. Next, so what that auxiliary line is telling me is that since the action's happening at x equals 1, to the left of our auxiliary line, I'm going to be using the first function. To the right of our auxiliary line, I'll be using the second function because we have split the domain into two pieces. So let's go. Um, it's also helpful sometimes to think about an XY chart. You don't have to do it, but it will be helpful here to get a little grip on what's happening. So for the first function, I am only going to plug in values that are strictly less than 1. And since I got to multiply by half, I'm only going to choose even numbers that are strictly less than 1. So how about negative 4? negative 2 and 0. So those are some even numbers that are going to work out nicely that I can plug into this function. So what is f of negative 4? Well, x must be less than 1, so negative 4 is less than 1. That means I'm going to use the top function here. So 1 half of negative 4 squared. I'm going to follow order of operations, which means I'm going to square first, get 16, take half of that, and get 8. So we have a point at negative 4, 8. Of course, you all know that this is, the, this is a parabola, this function. So we're about to draw a curve in here. And next, let's do f of negative 2. 1 half of negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is 4. Half of that is 2. Back 2, up 2. And then let's keep going. Let's plug in the 0. This will give us our y-intercept f of 0, of course, is 0. So 0, 0. Now, we've got to think about this because there are infinitely many values that exist between 0 and 1. Now, what I do like to do, and I'm even going to draw the demarcation line right here to remind myself of this. Let's plug in the 1 and let's see where the point would be if this were or equal to 1. So f of 1 would be 1 half of 1 squared. That would simply be 1 half. So what's happening here at 1, at x equals 1, this first function stops. And we want to indicate that with part of the graph, but since it's strictly less than, what we're about to graph is going to be open. It's going to be open right there because the function, this piece of it, does not exist at x equals 1. But it exists at x equals, how about, what if we let x be 0.9999999999. So don't forget, we're going to go all the way to the 1 but not include it. So here is our first piece of our piecewise function. Remember, this is a parabola. It's a nice, smooth curve. I'm trying to make it nice and smooth. So there we go. This is the left-hand side. This is everything to the left of x equals 1. Once again, that is open. Okay, now we're on the other side of the auxiliary line, our demarcation line, which I'm also showing on my xy chart here which when x is greater than or equal to 1, we're going to use the bottom function. So let's plug in 1 here because 1 does exist in this interval. So this is going to be f of 1, which will be 2 times 1 minus 1. That's 2 minus 1, which is 1. So over 1, 
up one. So that is a point that is directly on top of that open circle. Let's keep going here. Two and three. So we could find f of two. That is two times two minus one. That's four minus one. That's three. And then f of three. Two times three minus one. That is five. Over two. One, two, three. Over three, up five. And hopefully what you're seeing here is like, you're like, oh my goodness, Henry, couldn't we have just said, well, this has a slope of two over one and gone up two over one? Yes, because this guy, of course, is a linear function where the top one was parabolic. So now we don't have a nice smooth curve. We just have a line starting at one, one and going up forever. So that is a piecewise function. Piecewise function. Do I have another one? Uh, of course I do. Let's do the next one. Um, this one, we've got more intervals, more pieces of the graph. So we're going to draw in an auxiliary line at negative 2 and positive 2. So we're going to have an auxiliary line here and here because this piecewise function has three pieces. So that means the first part of the graph will be to the left of the first auxiliary line. The second part of the graph exist in between the auxiliary lines and the third part of the graph exists to the right of x equals 2, the second auxiliary line. Now, these functions are a little bit different. These are all constant functions. So, g of x is equal to negative 2 when x is strictly less than negative 2. So, think about it. Y equals negative 2 is a horizontal line. It's just a horizontal line here. So when we are strictly less than negative 2, we're just at Y equals negative 2. So we have an open circle at negative 2 because this is strictly less than, but the function starts out looking something like that. Now, when we are greater than or equal to negative 2 and up to but not including positive 2, we're at y equals 1. So that, of course, there's y equals 1 right there. So we will close the circle here and then be a constant function. But remember, we're less than, strictly less than 2, so open again. Think about it. If this were closed and this were closed, would this pass the vertical line test? Uh, no. So that's why if this one is closed, this one has to be open. Same thing here. Because our next function says g of x equals 4 when x is greater than or equal to 2. So, all right, at 2, we are equal to 4, and then the function takes off to the right. So this is the graph of this piecewise function. One, two, three. Three branches of this graph, three intervals of the domain, three pieces. That's what's happening here. Once again, this is still a function. It passes the vertical line test because if this is open, then this one has to be solid for it to not have any. Um, think about it. There's nothing in the domain that's missing here. The domain of this function is all real numbers, but the range of this function would only be a roster because constant, constant, constant. There's no increasing, there's no decreasing here. So the range would simply be a roster of negative 2, 1, and 4. So you have to consider when should I use an interval, when should I use a roster whenever we're answering questions, and this is one of those times. That is all about piecewise functions.